Good evening there, ladies and gents, and I'm going to do a review of my theatre-going experience the other week. Um, a couple of weeks ago, on my birthday, actually, I had the pleasure of accompanying my friend to a double screening of a Hitchcock um, marathon, Rear Window and Vertigo, at the 30s Art Deco Cinema, The Astor, in Melbourne. It's one of the few um, standing 30s Art Deco cinemas still in existence in this state. And unfortunately, it's kind of under threat of closure. Um, the management um, are changing, and I'm worried that the new management might just bulldoze it and put housing there instead. So I really hope that doesn't happen. It's a lovely old building, and I showed up to um, the venue with my friend um, just in the nick of time for the show. We were running a bit late. We just had dinner, and we were running towards the venue. And we got in, and the queue was massive. Like There was a huge outpouring of support for the... Um, films. Like, I knew Hitchcock was popular, but I didn't think he was that popular. And um, the queue was insane. And fortunately, the tickets were cheap, and the building is just fantastic. It's got this huge, big, old lobby, and um, for old vintage film posters everywhere. And they show a mix of films, vintage and new. And I'll keep an eye on their calendar, because I want to go up there um, more times in the future. Like, if it does close, I want to get some more out of the Astor experience before it does. And um, the actual cinema was this grand old theatre. It was so exciting going in there. You can almost feel the palpable excitement that people of the time in the 30s would have had upon seeing a movie at the theatre. It was like getting dressed up and going to a play on a stage. It was just a fantastic grand old building. And in the old days, it would have been an orchestra pit down the bottom, like playing along with the silent movie or a piano player. Or something like that, and the the it was the crowd was bigger than I would have um seen in a new release movie at the Hoyt Cinema or something like that. Um, it, it, people from all ages, old and young, and male and female, just such a huge crowd. I was blown away at how many people there were, and it could be because there was just one screening of the movies in question. Like they're only planning to screen at once. Whereas a range of release new film would be screened over a period of weeks or months. So the attendance would be more gradual. But in this case, they all attended on the same night. And it was unreal. It was amazing. And people all got up and applauded at the end of Rear Window, the first movie of the two. Um, they didn't applaud at the end of Vertigo, probably because they were a bit too terrified. M my companion that was with me, my friend, was absolutely scared out of her wits by the end of Vertigo. Like, she was on the edge of her seat. <laughs> uh, I don't know what was wrong with people, because nobody else seemed to be doing that, but perhaps they were, in their own way, experiencing the same trauma that my friend was by the end of Vertigo. And um, we got trailers with the films, and they were the actual original trailers. So we got um, a trailer for the From Russia With Love and Thunderball, a double James Bond feature, which is coming up soon at the Astor, I'm a big James Bond fan, and it was great. It was a great treat seeing the original James Bond trailers on the big screen. The, the old, uh, not sure, but I think 70, mil 70 millimeter film and all on the big screen. <laughs> it was incredible, and people laughing in unison at Connery's cheesy lines. Oh, I love the James Bond films. And we also got a trailer for um, 2001 A Space Odyssey on the big screen. It was polarizing at the time, but now it's almost universally hailed as a classic Kubrick film, and a classic science fiction film, and a respectable science fiction film. I love science fiction to death, I've always been a sci-fi fan, but 2001 is one of the few sci-fi movies which pretentious art snob critics lord as a classic, really. It's like a movie which appeals to both intellectuals and populists, although it might be a bit too slow for today's standards for kids these days, and it was amazing to see the trailer for that, and I wouldn't mind going to see 2001 on the big screen. We also received the trailer for North by Northwest, uh, yeah, another classic Hitchcock film, and one of my favourite Hitchcocks, and that's coming up soon at the Astor soon as well, and it was good to see the trailer for that one on the big screen. And um, so there's going to be a lot more Hitchcock to come. And also Gone with the Wind is coming up again. I missed it last time, um, due to unfortunate circumstances of my friend, but we're planning to go and see it again in October. So I might have a review of Gone with the Wind Up for you. I own it on DVD, but I might go and see it on the big screen anyway. I own Vertigo and Rear Window on Blu-ray, 
but I just had to go and catch them in these amazing big screen prints. Real Window was presented in um, a 35mm format, and Vertigo was in a rare 70mm format, if I'm not mistaken. A very rare print, with full surround sound. It was just amazing hearing right down to Jimmy Stewart closing his car door in Vertigo, and just it, the sound echoed all around the theatre. It's just incredible seeing such an old film with such a beautifully restored soundtrack. Um, the films don't need much introduction. Uh, Rear Window is an absolute, hands-down Hitchcock classic. It's just got an amazing supporting cast of characters who you all care about. Um, even though very few of them actually speak any dialogue throughout the film, you really get a sense of their situation. Of course, we all know Jimmy Stewart's laid out in bed with a broken leg um, from an accident. Uh, he's got cold feet and he won't marry his beautiful, beautiful partner, Grace Kelly, for some reason. Reasons unknown to me and unknown to the rest of the audience. Like, has she ever looked better than any other film, Grace Kelly? I don't think so. So I don't know what's wrong with him. <laughs> and um, everyone was laughing along with his somewhat uh, mean jokes, like telling her to shut up and... Um, it was, it was crude and it was mean, but everyone laughed along in the audience. It was just a, a rapture of laughter. And, um, yeah, and his nursemaid got a lot of attention, too, from the audience. She was fantastic. The actress playing his nurse, Thelma Ritter, was amazing in this film. She absolutely commanded the screen with her kind of crude analysis of the situation. Real Window is about a man kind of almost being a peeping Tom, looking into the windows of his neighbours, and um, just look into their lives. And all of the people are in various stages of relationship. So we've got a newlywed couple that have just moved into their house. We've got um, a young woman, Miss Torso, whose boyfriend is away. She, he's in the army. Uh, we've got an old married couple who sleep on the outside balcony with a little dog that they lower down in the basket. We've got uh, Raymond Burr and his wife, um, the Four Walls. And... James Stewart, of course, thinks he sees Four World murder his wife, and that forms the crux of the story. And as I was saying, Thelma Ritter's character makes these really wry, funny observations, like, oh, uh, I hope he manages to clean up all the blood off the walls of the bathroom. She was just really inappropriate and funny, and she was amazing in this role. Grace Kelly was also brilliant in the role, and so was James Stewart. Everyone was fantastic in this movie. There's not much I can say about it. It is a Hitchcock classic, and the audience loved it. They were really getting into it and laughing along. And the, I thought the ending was just fabulous. The final scene, I was I could barely even move from all the suspense. They don't call Hitchcock the master of suspense for nothing. The last scene, when Jimmy Stewart's in the room, unarmed, and he's got a broken leg, and he can't move or escape, and Raymond Burr, Forwald, confronts him in his room, and there's nothing he can do. He's got no weapons. And ingeniously, he comes up with that solution of the flashbulbs and tries blinding Forwald. And that kind of scene wouldn't happen these days. It's just, it's the kind of final moment in a movie, a climactic scene which you wouldn't see in a modern blockbuster. There'd be a big punch-up or a fight scene or something. Not that I've got a problem with that. They've got their time and place. But Hitchcock had this amazing way of making the audience go into the character's shoes and just feel terrified along with the character. The character was completely vulnerable, and we felt every moment of it, and I thought it was just a brilliant finish to the movie. Uh, Rear Window is one of the classics, and everyone got up and applauded in the cinema at the end. Uh, Vertigo is one of my hands-down favourite Hitchcock movies. I've reviewed it previously on my movie channel, so you can seek out my Vertigo review separately. Um, watching it again, um, you just notice new details every time when you watch it. Um, Kim Novak is amazingly nuanced, as the dual characters of Madeline and Judy. She, of course, looks different. The makeup and the hair that she wears as each character is quite different. But even she even performs them differently. Judy is a very different character to her Madeline. And I think in previous viewings, I kind of underrated her in this. I think she did a really good job in this movie, actually. And as for the main character, Scotty Ferguson, or, or um, yeah, everyone calls him Scotty, but his name's actually John. John Ferguson, played by the inimitable Jimmy Stewart. Nobody else could have played that part. Jimmy Stewart owned that character. If it was any other actor, if it was a more sinister or more um, gruff kind of actor, we probably would find him repulsive in the second half of the movie, when, he, when the movie becomes about his obsession with um, Judy and Madeline. And um, 
Yeah, the film's like a study of obsession. At first, it's about the murder plot, but it's not really about the murder at all. It's about Jimmy Stewart's character's obsession with the past. And, um, yeah, any other actor would have... We wouldn't have felt sympathy for him. It just had to be Jimmy Stewart, the actor that everyone seems to like. And it's just a magnificent film. Uh, unbearably suspenseful. As I said, my friend just couldn't tolerate it anymore at the end. She thought it was a wonderful film, but just was... Oh, the end scene with the bell tower was just unbelievable. And everyone left in silence. Like, I don't know if they enjoyed the film or not, but maybe they were just as terrified as my friend was. And um, it's just one of the all-time Hitchcock greats that don't make movies like that anymore. Vertigo is a psychological thriller in the best sense of the word. If they remade it today, it wouldn't be nearly as subtle. It would be all in your face with lots of swearing and suggestive scenes. And Hitchcock liked to toy around with controversial themes, but he did them within the limitations of the old censorship um, regulations. And I think that made them better films. Like, it's just more subtle. And it's not as in your face as a modern film would be. And Vertigo is a fantastic thriller and one of the all-time classics. And I had the privilege of seeing it and Rear Window on my birthday at the wonderfully restored 30 cinema, the Astor. Um, I definitely want to go to the Astor again. And um, I'll have some more film reviews shortly, including maybe some more movies from the Astor and some more Hitchcock. Have a delightful evening, ladies and gentlemen. And just before I go, I'd like to wish you all a good evening. My name is Alfred Hitchcock. I'll have some more terrible Hitchcock impressions for you later on. Have a great one, ladies and gentlemen.